Hey guys, welcome to our, our HIPAA requirements explained. This is a partnership between Wheelhouse IT and Netrix. Um, it's going to be primarily run by Ken Tripp from Netrix, but my name is Rory and I oversee business development here at Wheelhouse IT. Um, moving forward, I there we go. Uh, Rory, there we go. Housekeeping. Um, all attendees should be on mute. Feel free to ask questions. Um, there's a chat feature at the bottom of the screen. Feel free to type in your questions as you have them. Questions will be answered during the session or during the Q&A part. A follow-up email will include the slides in the webinar recording, and a webinar should take roughly 30 minutes. So let's kick this off. Um, next up is our agenda. We're going to talk about the, the next challenge, which is data. How do you secure your data and ensure that your, your PHI data is, is where it should be and not floating around your environment? Uh, the HIPAA privacy security rule and breach requirements is going to touch base on what that means for you and your practice best practices for creating a compliance program and the features and benefits of Netrix and Wheelhouse combined. And then following that is our Q&A session. And then I'm gonna throw it over to Ken Tripp right now from Netrix to sort of walk through his part. Ken? Great, Roy, thank you so much. And thanks everybody for joining today. Uh, we're gonna run through obviously uh, some things that are specific to the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, otherwise known as HIPAA. Uh, but we're gonna start off one of, with one of the big challenges uh, today, right, which is data in the marketplace, in the growth of it, the transition to hybrid infrastructures, evolving compliance, um, which we're seeing the market go to uh, very steadily and fast, right? So when we're looking at data growth, almost 800% growth is expected. We'll also look at hybrid infrastructures, about 90% of organizations may not move completely to the cloud. Uh, but some type of a hybrid, uh, which does leave your data exposed, increasing threats, uh, becoming more uh, uh, frequent and obviously very public, right? So uh, just back in 2018, uh, over 4.5 billion data records were stolen. Um, so security is becoming uh, very important, not just keeping the penetrators from getting into the infrastructure, but, so, but securing that data as well. And then we're seeing evolving compliance. When you look at even outside of HIPAA from GDPR, CCPA, and the New York SHIELD Act. A lot of regulations now are tightening, or tightening around how you're securing that data. And then we're looking at the visibility. Very important, look, if there is a breach, 60% of small businesses uh, will go out of business uh, from a cyber attack. So how do we start protecting that? Uh, and that's what we're gonna speak of today, not only with the technology of metrics, but enabling and partner uh, such as wheelhouse IT to provide those managed services and create a continuous compliance model uh, to protect your business. So when we're looking at uh, some of the statistics around uh, data breaches in 2019, a uh, new survey was just done, a new report was just done, excuse me, by risk-based security, and some really interesting um, statistics came about. So when we're looking at the key highlights, uh, really, there's only about a 1% increase in breaches, which doesn't sound like a lot, but there's already a ton of them out there. But what was really interesting is the number of records exposed jumped up 284%, and that's 91% compared to 2017 to 2018 and then to 2019. So with the breaches, now these bad actors are going after something, and that is really centered around the data, and those are the crown jewels and they're making money off of it, right? So uh, important to the healthcare sector, uh, most importantly, um, you know, the breaches at technology providers push the information sector to the top, but it's closely follow followed by the healthcare sector, right? So uh, we're seeing that the market of healthcare uh, is a high target of those bad actors. When we're looking at just kind of the statistics at a glance on the left, you'll see the increase there in the breaches uh, from 7,000, excuse me, seven, uh, the 798, again, just 1%. But on the right is the true picture. Look at the amount of increase uh, in data that numbers of records. Uh, and this is cost in, in the millions per each year. So they're after something. And it's something that we need to focus on to make sure that we're putting controls in place to protect the data. When we're looking at data loss by vertical, again, healthcare is right there. Uh, number two, right behind uh, the information sector. And on the right, you can see what uh, they're after, right? So obviously names, uh, data birth, it's PHI and it's PII. And we've got to make sure that we put controls in place 
uh, again, to secure that on a continuous basis. So what is Netrix? Netrix was born as a change auditing platform, enabling controls over changes, configurations, access, and providing security analytics of who did what, when, and where in the infrastructure. Uh, also, uh, it will go and detect anomalous behavior uh, from your users as well, and then map things out for compliance use. Really looking at promoting the best security standards um, uh, set forth by compliance use such as HIPAA. Uh, when you're looking at securing the sensitive data, Netrix has the feature functionality to be able to go out and crawl that data, classify it uh, from social security numbers to dates of birth, uh, to credit card information, et cetera, but really allows uh, our partners such as Wheelhouse to help you pass uh, com compliance audits and increase the productivity uh, of your IT staff uh, in-house as well. When we're looking at the CSF model, this is something that's being adopted widely, and again, it comes back down to securing that data. So not only is compliance uh, uh, something of a, a fire drill for an audit anymore. It's really securing uh, that infrastructure through the framework and being able to identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. Uh, when we're looking at the basic identification, it's very proactive. Uh, what sensitive data uh, do we have? Where is it? Who has access to it? Uh, who is accessing that sensitive data? And is there any normal activity going on uh, around it as well? And these are the types of uh, procedures uh, that Wheelhouse can put in place. So it's not really only the feature functionality of the software, uh, but it's somebody maintaining that for you uh, so you can respond to a breach or protect yourself uh, from a breach that may be coming. So things to think about as we kind of go through <clears throat> the next few slides here, and it's about compliance and security, right? So. How many HIPAA and other regulatory audits do you undergo each year? What kind of time does that take? And most importantly, are you empowered to demonstrate uh, the specific re uh, requirements that you're meeting on a continuous basis? When we're looking at security, again, that's coming right back to the data. <clears throat> do you store any electronic personal health information? How do you ensure that each user can access only the appropriate one? And how do you determine who actually has access and where is that data? So some of those things that you need to think about uh, from securing your infrastructure, not only from a compliance standpoint, uh, but from security as well. So when we're looking at HIPAA, it's really broken down into three main control components. We're looking at the privacy role, the security role, and then breach notification. And really it starts off with the privacy rules. That sets the foundation. What restrictions in terms of access, accounting uh, complaints do you have in place? Right, and establishing those safeguards, uh, you know, especially when you're looking at minimum necessary, it's really following the least privilege model. And again, promoting those best security standards inside of the environment. When we're looking at the security rule, well, that comes basically back to that electronic uh, protected health information, right? And the required standards, required standards and specifications around that, and they go all the way from uh, not only technical, but physical, administrative, et cetera. Uh, you might even be looking at something as multi-factor authentication uh, to make sure the administrative rights um, are granted um, appropriately. And then we look at the third component, which is the breach notification. And this is really focusing on the ability to respond to a breach uh, if a PHI is infected, right? And that's where Wheelhouse comes into, uh, as a managed service comes into play, of uh, creating that continuous compliance control, getting alerts, analyzing the data and the user behavior activity around the infrastructure as well. Uh, so when we break into those three uh, different components, then of course the ramification of not putting something in place is the violations, right? And most importantly, um, it's not only looking at if a violation occurs, or a breach happens, but having a preventative measure in place, and was there negligence around that as well? So when we're looking at penalties, and this is coming back from the HIPAA journal uh, that we took this off of, um, there's different penalties from you know willful neglect to reasonable cause, and you can see the minimums and maximums there. But notice too that those are penalties per violation, and we all know that there are various requirements uh, inside of HIPAA that must be followed. So when we're looking kind of at just a practical application, 
Um, simply, the security rule defines this as implementing hardware, software, procedural mechanisms, right, that record and examine activity in the information system that it carry or contain this electronic protected health information. And that's where Netflix really does love partnering with our managed service providers because really it's those procedural mechanisms that can help prevent or respond to any type of a breach for your audit controls that are essential. When we're looking at just simply passing the audit, uh, the main bullet right here really that we need to look at is, oh, one moment for me. The main bullet that we need to look at here is really, um, is it being done in before an official audit or investigation takes place? Again, that comes back to that continuous compliance model, not showing any negligence and being proactive in not only the compliance, but the securing of your infrastructure. So what do you need to know? You, you need to know where that information is used, is it disclosed, um, and who is accessing it, right? And it's a governance uh, type of play between uh, personal health information and just, you know, basic information that you have that is sensitive all around. Can you create workflows? Do you know that it's going into a secure area? Do you have the ability to remediate uh, such information uh, so it's not exposed uh, even if a breach were to occur? And so that's when we get into best practices of being able to discover and classify that data making sure that you also have asset identification across your network and corrective action plans in place. And that's for endpoint analysis, for different locations, different domains that you might have. Um, again, coming all around protecting that sensitive data uh, through compliance regulations. So as we're looking at solutions, um, simply you're looking at minimizing the risk of the data breach and ensuring that your rare regulatory compliance is accurate, right? Uh, identifying the security risk. Can we or can we not protect it? And then addressing new compliance requirements that are coming day to day. Again, we showed some of those statistics. It's not only about the, the breaches, but about if your infrastructure is compromised, what are they going after and are you protected? Uh, of course, at the end of the day too, um, avoid paying any kind of uh, breach settlements or non-compliance fines, very important. Uh, to the healthcare industry. So when we're looking overall at what Netflix and Wheelhouse can protect you for, it's basically uh, various different applications inside the infrastructure, detecting changes in anomalous behavior in Active Directory, file servers, all across a hybrid infrastructure into Office 365 uh, and beyond, uh, looking at numerous, uh, numerous different sources as well, from EMC, NetApp, Nutanix files, so it gives you a nice breadth um, of coverage no matter what your environment looks like. And when we're looking simply at the managed services, it's their ability to allow you to hear, allow you to optimize, and allow you to grow your business, right? Um, when we're looking at optimization, it might even be the need to uh, migrate some of your data to the cloud, but you don't want to take that rock, which is the redundant, obsolete, and trivial information. It's storage optimization. Uh, so there's various different things that Wheelhouse can provide you uh, beyond just a continuous compliance model in terms of helping your business grow. What they're looking at is, you know, different things in, in terms of the risk of your environment, right? Uh, are there share folders accessible by everyone? Well, that's not following the least privilege model. You know, how many accounts have passwords that are never set to expire? These basic simple regulations and requirements that are put in place where you're following those security standards. Most importantly is being able to catch any type of changes uh, to these types of risks that you see in your environment just in case there is a breach and somebody is what we call dwelling inside of your infrastructure. When we're looking at reducing the exposure, all of a sudden now Wheelhouse has the opportunity to go crawl your data, see where any of your PCI or HIPAA information may weigh, which uh, public share is it on, or is it in a SQL server, wherever it might be. This gives them the ability to harden uh, the information, workflow it to a secure information, or again, redact that information for you. Very, very important to reduce the exposure uh, even before it turns into a breach, right? 
again, we talk about who has access and following that least privilege model. Um, there might even be behaviors where somebody gets access to your CEO's mailbox um, and infringing upon the security of your data that way. Uh, following folder permissions, is it you know, related to a group or did they get direct access? Who gave them direct access? All these things are incredibly important, not only after you classify the data, but then seeing who has access and then even going forward to anomalous behavior around that. Um, so being able to detect and investigate odd things that are going on. It could be uh, somebody logging in past business hours. But again, this takes a lot of work, right, and a lot of time. Wheelhouse IT is able to simply take that information, create a continuous compliance model for you, and then react and protect against the alerts if they see anomalies, anomalous inside of your infrastructure. So with that, some of the things that we talked about at the very beginning was looking at uh, HIPAA not only from a compliance uh, standard, but also from data security. I, I think that we showed some of the uh, important statistics now where compliance just isn't about meeting an audit. Uh, it's also about protecting your infrastructure, which is where security comes. It needs to be proactive and not reactive. Um, and those things are where metrics and wheelhouse combine for a partnership really to help your business thrive uh, reduce the time labor and costs on your end uh, and allowing you to grow and be more profitable. So with that, we'll open it up for some questions. Um, if there's any in the chat window, please leave them there. Hey, Ken, I don't think anybody had and entered anything to the chat window. We had a couple people in, uh, come in throughout. Um, feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions, comments, ideas. Um, one thing I think that we did not mention here is, and in, in Ken, feel free to expand upon this from my side of things. I look at this as a, as a brand reputation. So as you have a data breach, your, your brand is also at stake here. Um, you have, at the end of the day, you still have to report to all your end users that you've lost their data or their data has gotten out somehow. And what could that do to your business or, or your practice at the end of the day? Um, so you know Roy, i completely agree with that and if, if you're looking to expand so many of these um, new regulations that are coming out and tightening regulations on existing compliances it's really all based on the consumer and the consumer need uh, and the consumer demand so when you're looking at gdpr that is floated all the way across here to the states um, it is having that consumer uh, giving the ability to the right to be forgotten right so it is consumer driven uh, if you are affected by a breach and not protecting yourselves, especially with neglect, uh, that consumer has a right to go other places. Um, so I, I definitely agree with you. And in terms of the brand strategy, very important uh, to have these uh, types of compliance plans in place. Yeah, something I think a lot of practices don't don't think about at the end of the day is their, is their brand. Um, I don't see that we have any questions coming in. No one has taken themselves off the of mute. Um, the, the other side of this is, is if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to whoever invited you to the, to the webinar or, or reach out to us uh, via our, our website at wheelhouseit.com or, or feel free to shoot an email to sales at wheelhouseit.com. I mean, any of our, our team members would be more than happy to, to kind of walk, walk you through this, have an understanding of, of what we could do to help protect you, your business, your brand. Um, we partner with networks on this because they are a, a leader in the industry in terms of uh, finding the, the data that should not be floating around um, and classifying it the way that it should be so you know exactly where your data lives inside of your environment. Um, with that, we're, we're here to help and we're here to, to guide you through some stuff. If you'd like a complimentary risk assessment, our, our team is happy to, to make that happen. Um, Ken, if you have nothing else, we do want to thank you for your time and we look forward to hosting another webinar with you. Um, we like that it was short, sweet, to the point, um, and hopefully the 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 viewers found it useful, so. Great, yeah, well, Rory, thanks so much for having us and we enjoy our partnership with Wheelhouse IT, thank you. Of course, thank you.